Hi, we're going to be talking today about password policies, which are a really key aspect of your security setup. Now, a password is a straightforward concept, right? They are used to limit user access. They are a type of user access restriction. So only the person who knows a password should gain access to that account. Every employee will have hopefully a unique password. And so only that employee should be able to gain access to their particular files or accounts or whatever it is. Now, they're a very simple concept, but are clearly not always not always used properly. We have what we call weak passwords, and a password which is said to be weak is, first of all, easily guessable. If you're able to guess the password, that makes it weak. So, for example, in this picture, my password, 123456, QWERTY, yeah, they're not great passwords, they're weak. The bottom one is kind of a mix of different letters, numbers, symbols. That's a strong password. So those ones on the screen are guessable. A human can just predict that someone's going to use quite a common password. But also, some passwords are quite easy to be broken through brute force. Brute force is a technique where you just check every single combination. Now, despite even small passwords having millions, if not billions of combinations, still for a computer, that is not very difficult to break. And so the longer the password is, and the more characters, numbers, symbols you have, the better it is, the stronger it is. And clearly as an organization, you want to try and ensure your employees are not using weak passwords because they undermine other security measures. You could have amazing firewalls, amazing antivirus software. You could have otherwise really hardened devices, but a weak password could allow an attacker access without much trouble at all. Now, as someone who maybe is in charge of cybersecurity, a key weapon in your arsenal against bad passwords are policies which define what acceptable passwords are. So this policy will be hopefully setting specific parameters which are telling employees what makes a strong password. If you just had a very quick policy saying, please set strong passwords, that could be interpreted in a few different ways. It may mean certain employees are not actually using strong passwords, at least how you want them to. So this policy should hopefully set some really clear parameters, which are details about what exactly you want people to do. So for example, a common one is having minimum lengths. So enforcing maybe at least eight characters long. The longer the password is, the less chance there is of it being broken through a brute force attack. The longer it is, the more combinations, it's much harder to break it. And adding to this, if you are able to mix up your password with combinations of upper case letters, lower case letters, numbers, symbols. The more jumbled this is up, the harder it is to guess and also the harder it is to break again with brute force. And I'd say it's a fairly recent aspect of many password policies, but often they will try and block you from using information which is easily found. So you might try and put in your date of birth in your password and it might detect that and block it. It might also block your username or your name or your address, something which could be easily found about you and so would make it easier for an attacker to guess the password. And just to give you a final parameter which is often included, usually they'll insist on changing passwords regularly and how regularly will be defined in this policy. It might be a month, it might be six months, it might be a year. Generally the lower amount of time is good up until a limit, which we'll talk about a bit later. So all these things will hopefully be more specific in an actual policy. It will say exactly how long it should be, exactly how often you need to change it. But it's important to specify what exactly you want from your employees to avoid any misunderstanding. Now, all of these parameters are, I think, quite sensible and all well and good. Of course, the issue is employees and users do not always follow what you want them to do. So the important first step to enforcing this policy is to require users or employees to confirm they have actually read the policy. Maybe you do some training to talk to them about it and why it's important. Get them to confirm they are listening and are going to follow it. Doesn't mean they will follow it, to be quite honest. And so thankfully, you are able to actually enforce it by using some system settings in most cases. Now, what this means in practice is as an administrator to a company network, you're able to go in and set certain set of parameters effectively from your policy in the software itself. So here is a screen from Windows. The admin is going in and setting certain settings for the password. For example here, it's got to be changed after a year. That seems quite a long time to me, but that's their choice. Also, it's got to be at least seven characters long. That seems quite short to me, but again, it's their choice. Um, so that's what it looks like from an admin point of view. From a user, 
you might get a message if you put in something too short. I'm not sure why that message is coming up actually looking at that, six characters, that's more than six, but anyway, it might send you a message. Also, once it expires, you might get a message telling you to change it and so on. It can be quite annoying, but it does mean your policy is getting followed and there's no way around it for the user. Now, before I finish, let me just talk about a few potential issues with password policies, because some companies go a little bit too strict with their policies and overly strict policies are very hard for employees to follow. They might want to follow it, but if it's really strict, it can make things very difficult, especially with passwords, because if you are forcing, say, your employees to have a really long password or change it really, really often, it makes it a lot easier to forget the password. Now that's bad for security because your employee can't get access to their computer, but also it's annoying to have to reset passwords. And so if employees are forgetting the passwords, they may get in the habit of writing passwords down, which is a bad idea for security because it's no longer an effective access restriction if somebody beyond the employee is able to just walk in, read the password and log on to that employee's account. And passwords generally are not just the only measure you need to think about. And even with strong passwords, they can still get stolen and can still get taken by attackers through something like social engineering. So maybe they get a phishing attempt and the employee falls to a phishing attempt, clicks the link, types in their password and it's gone, right? A strong password does not protect against social engineering and other techniques like that. 